my name's Leah Heiss. I'm a designer and an RMIT researcher. Through my research and practice, I design wearable health technologies, services and experiences to improve or save life. My collaborative projects include jewellery to administer insulin through the skin for diabetics, emergency jewellery for times of medical crisis, swallowable devices to detect disease, and most recently, a wearable to detect loneliness in collaboration with Bolton Clark aged care providers. Today I wanted to talk about designing with people at the centre through telling you four short stories. As a child, we lived for a time with my grandfather, Heinz Heiss, in Seattle, Washington. Heinz was from the mountains of Austria, he's from Tyrol, and he was an orthopaedic shoeman. His craft was to design beautiful shoes for people who had club feet, for people who had one leg shorter than the other, and for people who'd had polio as children. And he once designed a pair of shoes for a woman who'd never been able to dance due to her disability. They look like ordinary Mary Janes from the outside, so that's a, a black shoe with a little strap, but concealed complex orthopedic inserts. The shoes enabled this woman to forget about her disability for a period of time, to be normal, whatever that might mean, and to dance. Fast forward 30 years, and I'm embedded in nanotechnology Victoria. I was looking at ways that we could use their extraordinary technologies in human-centered design outcomes. At the time, Nanovic was working with about 40 different technologies, and these ranged from gold nanoparticles to detect cancer through to biosensors for our farmers. But I fell in love with this technology. It's called the NanoMap. It's a little patch that's about 10 millimeters across, two millimeters thick, and has between one and 10,000 microneedles on its surface. The NanoMap enabled pain-free delivery of insulin through the skin into the bloodstream, replacing syringes. This was a technology that had the capacity to totally transform the lives of people with diabetes. In order to apply the patch to the skin, Nanovic needed to design a drug delivery device. And so they worked with a really talented group of engineers. And I should preface this by saying I work with engineers all the time and I really like them. Um, and so the engineers had done an excellent job and developed a very effective technology. It was about this big, it was bright blue, it had a big red button, and it came in a large metal suitcase. And I remember thinking at the time, and, and perhaps saying out loud to my colleagues, if I was a teenager who had to go to the toilet to inject and was already feeling embarrassed, would I want to trade my discreet syringe for a giant blue rocket launcher in a large metal suitcase? And I thought, possibly not. And this started a really wonderful dialogue about whether we could design a piece of contemporary jewelry that was also a drug delivery device that would pass unnoticed in the world, yet radically transform the life of its wearer. And this is what we came up with. This is the diabetes neck piece. It is the drug delivery device. It applies the patch to the skin, and the ring that you saw earlier holds it in place throughout the day. In 2015, I was invited to design the form and user experience for FACET, the world's first self-fit and modular hearing aid, with Blamey Saunders Hears. They're a really innovative, Melbourne-based, profit-for-purpose company. FACET is a really human-centered technology. Its intuitive magnetic connector bypasses the need to change tiny batteries, an ongoing source of frustration for people who have tactile insensitivity, vision impairment, or arthritis. In order to disassociate FACET from traditional languages of disability, or disabled beige, as I call it, I sought inspiration from the mineralogy collection at Museums Victoria to inform the form, colour and texture for the hearing aid. I spent a lot of time in the archives with the head of sciences. As a result, the technology looks very different from traditional hearing aids. In black, it's matte and sleek, the SUV of the hearing aid world. I like to think. In rose gold, it's precious and delicate. White is opalescent and shiny, while silver integrates into the hairline of people with white or silvery locks. The design intent is to intrigue users and to overcome that instinctual fear response that we have when we're confronted by something alien or frightening. As a result, these are wearable health technologies that are integrated into our sense of self-identity rather than remaining separate to it. To be placed delicately on the bedside cabinet with wedding ring and other precious possessions, rather than stowed discreetly in the medical cabinet. 
A few years ago, a cancer hospital came to us with a challenge. They wanted to bring together their oncologists, their nurses, their receptionists and their art therapists to break down the silos and to enable these people to empathise with each other and with the person at the centre of the healthcare journey. So we designed the Tactile Tools, a design thinking methodology to bring together diverse groups of people to work on big problems in iterative and collaborative ways. Since then, we've continued to evolve the methodology over the last few years and have now used it with over 170 people from across engineering, healthcare, aged care and disability support. With Bolton Clark, to rethink end of life experience. And this is our good friend, Martu Bush, who's sitting at the back, helping us to co-facilitate that workshop. With PHN, Northwestern Melbourne, to understand the lived experience of disadvantaged mothers in the Western Growth Corridor. With the Victorian Healthcare Association, to understand the obstacles to implementing voluntary assisted dying in Victoria later this year. And most recently, with young people in nursing homes, to understand the experience of people with acquired brain injury as they try to navigate NDIS and the healthcare system. At RMIT, we're using our design expertise to tackle the really big issues and deliver human-centered solutions. And we're doing that by keeping people at the center, not healthcare systems, not support services, not technology, not systems, people. This is about encouraging an oncologist to empathize with her patient or at helping a company to rethink end of life experience. But it's also about creating joy, designing a hearing aid that people are proud to wear, or a necklace that looks cool but also keeps you alive. Or maybe even a very ordinary looking pair of Mary Janes that enable a woman to dance for the very first time. Thanks. <laughs>